Hi guys, welcome back to 10 Minute Reviews. I'm Jason. This is my fuzzy co-star Freya coming in like a little missile. Oh, she didn't jump in. Oh, she jumped in. <laughs> and, we're and we're bringing you today's video. As always guys, please hit the like and subscribe button. <laughs> We're just a small family channel. Me, the fuzzy one here, the wife, a lot of books. Love to talk about books. We're going to keep doing it no matter what, but we would really appreciate any support you guys might want to give us. Don't forget to check down below for links to today's book, any other applicable links. Thank you, by the way, to our patrons. We really appreciate that support as well. So today I want to talk about a, an author and a series that I've talked about in the past. It's a book too. I want to talk about M.E. Thorne and his book, The Immortal's Guide to Supervillainy, book two. As you guys know, I really like the, the superhero genre. Of course, I also like the fantasy genre, the mystery genre. So I like just about every genre. But the superhero one is, is pretty interesting, and it seems to be be uh, kind of on the rise amongst the, uh, the, the harem lit or, or uh, um, you know, more adultish uh, uh, type of, of sub-genre, I suppose. Um, more, more so even than science fiction, although I'm starting to see a lot more science fiction. So... The first one was really, really, really good. Now, I'm going to skip my usual four categories because I talked about them in the first video. Instead, I'm just going to talk about the book. And it's a ton of fun, guys. It is a ton, 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 ton of fun. Uh, the author really has a lot of fun, both with the superpowers, with the immortal character, and the fact that there are other immortal characters in this world as well. And, of course, the, the, the hero-villain dynamic, while also really putting their own spin on the mentality of, of a villain and what a villain really should be. So we return to Dr. Frederick Tripp, uh, our immortal. Now, he, he, he uses magic, but, uh, well, he doesn't personally use magic, but he uses, you know, teleportation circles, stuff like that. He's got huge amounts of money, so he's got his own private uh, fortress, basically one of many, and even has teleportation circles in there. So he acknowledges that there are things that appear to be magic. He still firmly, firmly, firmly believes that they are simply science that we do not understand yet. That may or may not be true within this particular world. There is a magic character, one of his protégés, of course, um, but what I find interesting about it is how his particular immortality works, and it's just, it's odd. It's odd to not really think about it as some form of magic, because basically, when Dr. Tripp is killed, he just, bloop, appears somewhere nearby to where he was killed. And what's interesting about it is he appears with all of his equipment. He doesn't appear naked. If he's wearing his battle armor, he appears with his battle armor. Now, aside from the immortality, that's his only superpower. But what he does have is hundreds of years of amassing technology, hundreds of years of studying. He studied the sciences. He studied as many of the sciences as he possibly can. Now, from the events of the first book, he is now released from his parole. He is a free man entirely. Uh, he still does have kind of a... Uh, uh, kind of a liaison with the UN, with the super-powered uh, uh, bureau, and that is Eris, a former hero. And Tripp still has his his mentality of what a villain is. What most of us think when we read comic books of what a villain is, Tripp cannot stand them. He thinks they're just a bunch of, of morons. Um, you know, the trying for world domination or riches or what whatnot. Um, to him, it just seems wasteful, stupid, selfish, and ultimately doomed to failure. Tripp's idea of what a villain truly is, is simply somebody that will do whatever it takes to achieve their particular goals for the betterment of mankind, or at least for the betterment of the parahuman population, for the betterment of somebody, uh, in some way, shape, or form. Tripp is not a hero, but honestly, when you read it, he kind of comes across more of an anti-hero. Something occurs around him, he doesn't care, he just walks away. Innocents can die, whatever it may be, doesn't care, he's just going to walk away. But in the grand scheme of things, his goals are for the betterment of parahumans. Not regular humans, but parahumans. So in a way, he's kind of an elitist, a classist, possibly even a racist, in that he, he looks at parahumans as something that needs to be protected and... Uh, and, and use his fortune and his abilities towards that. And of course, his AI, Cassiopeia, and then his various protégés. And he's still trying to convince Eris to come to the villain side because to him, the heroes are simply markers of the status quo. The heroes, per se, aren't actually trying to make the world a better place. They're trying to keep the status quo 
as is. And that's something that Dr. Chip does not, does not uh, condone. Now, this book is primarily focused on his Project Rebirth and his attempts to help his old lover regain her youth. Basically, almost turn her immortal. And his, his goal, she has a minor healing factor, had, and his goal is to figure out a way to jumpstart that healing factor again to return her to her youth, which theoretically could turn in her into another immortal. Now, one thing that Tripp does mention as we talk about immortals, because we meet two more, is that uh, there's a lot of potential immortals throughout history, and through their own idiocy, they don't end up joining the ranks. Uh, for instance, we end up meeting Franz. He's uh, um, the, the ruler of Lathmeria. Um, basically, he's their... I won't say Doctor Doom analog, but he is also an immortal. But his immortality is just based on his durability. He's just incredibly durable. Theoretically, he could be killed. Then we also meet Emma. Emma, the widow, is uh, her powers are undefined. Her immortality is undefined. Heck, her species is undefined. She may look human, but she is clearly not human. And she is a diehard enemy of Dr. Tripp's. Franz is, kind of seems, comes across more as a frenemy. At, at some point, they're, they are going to come to blows again, but that could be centuries down the road. You never know. Mostly, Tripp is just interested in figuring out his Project Rebirth, and something comes up at an auction that he believes will help him. Now, naturally, things go sideways in the auction. We end up, we end up with about a third of the book or more going through a, a hidden base, basically, a hidden nearby base, um, and, and uh, researching what was going on there at that base, infiltrating it, destroying part of it, finding what they need, <sighs> excuse me, finding what they need, finding what they were looking for, and then utilizing it to, to destroy the base, and then, of course, get home, get everything home, get all of their stuff home, so that they can then turn around and continue working on Project Rebirth. And what I like about this book, I really, really like the superhero genre. I've got one one of the five books I'm reading right now is a, a superhero genre, um, also a sequel that I'll be talking about very soon. But what I like about this series is that he pretty much writes them as contained, defined stories. He doesn't have these mysteries. There's no cliffhanger at the end of this book. Sure, there's certainly questions that, that like you, you can look at and go, huh, that could, oh, I wonder where this is going to go. But at the same time, it could just end and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. So one thing I like about these books are self-contained stories. They really, really are. And that makes them a lot easier, a lot more fun to read. Because uh, you never know. You never know when, when your author is just not going to finish the series if they leave you on cliffhangers. So you guys should check it out. If you like the superhero genre, if you like the harem lit subgenre, you guys should check out The Immortal's Guide to Supervillainy, book two by Emmy Thorne, after you hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye now.